uh, but he asked me, and uh, uh, somebody else did, I believe, um, they asked me to sing. Now, let, let me go ahead and tell you about my singing job. Uh, I don't have one. Um, and I don't, I, you know, I get asked occasionally, uh, Brother Joe, I get asked, they ask me occasionally, it blows my mind anybody asks me to sing, uh, but they do. And someone asked me, so why do you think they ask you to sing? And it's not what you think. It's not because I got a beautiful voice. I always say this. You've heard me say it. Brother Randy, I got a beautiful voice. I just rip it to shreds, getting it out. And, uh, but uh, I remember when uh, Calvin Bilderback, the great preacher in our area, was about to pass, and I'd, I'd gone, and Brother Chris, I was there, and I was at the end of the bed, and he hadn't talked in a, in a few days. He hadn't said a word in a few days, and, and he raised up in his bed, and Brother Jerry, I was at the end of the bed, and uh, the family had gathered around, and I don't, it just worked this way, I guess, and I was at the end of the bed, and he raised straight up in bed, and his eyes lit up like diamonds, and, and at first, now it didn't take me long to figure out he wasn't looking at me, but I saw his eyes light up, and I thought, is that man of God looking at me? And then it dawned on me. He leaned back and he breathed one more breath. You say, Derek, what, what do you think Brother Calvin saw? I'd give everything I own to get a glimpse at what he saw. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I don't know about you, the longer I live, my, my daddy and mom are getting older and I don't even like to talk about it. I, I, I'm not ready to let them go, but I do know that if time tarries, uh, we'll all be in that box. Not just my dad and my mom, but me and you if time tarries. But here's an old song, and I, I don't know. I hadn't sung it in at least a year or two, and I, I don't even know if I know how it goes, uh, but I do have the words on, on my phone. It's a little different, but it goes something like this. I was standing on the banks of the river Looking out over life's troubled sea When I saw an old ship that was sailing Yes, that's the old ship of Zion I see its hull was bent and battered. I could, I could see the other words are different from the storms of life. I could see waves were rough, but the old ship kept sailing. Yes, that's the old. Ship of Zion, I see at the stern of the ship was a captain. I could hear as he called out my name. Get on board. It's the old ship of Zion. It will never Pass this away again When I step on board I'll be leaving All my troubles and trials behind I'll be safe I'll be safe with Jesus the captain sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Would you give him a hand? He's worthy. I, uh, I love that old song. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm not expecting any phone calls. <laughs> Somebody say amen. 
If you have your Bible tonight, go to the book of Mark. I'll be in Mark chapter 14. Uh, I looked at the third message. I, I didn't finish it. I told Brother Danny, uh, I'm working. I worked yesterday and today on a little message, and uh, I, I've never preached it, uh, but I'm working on a little message I'll entitle Lessons About Praise. And uh, boy, it's, there's a whole lot in it. And, um, but the Lord wouldn't let me go again back to Song of Solomon. And I didn't finish it, but uh, I do believe I've heard from the Lord. And uh, for what you need to hear tonight at Grace. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but uh, I need to hear from Him. And I need instructions from time to time in my journey with the Lord and I'm in Mark chapter 14, I'm in verse number 3. When you get to Mark chapter 14 and you find verse number 3, do me a favor tonight and stand, stand all over the house. I'll go from verse 3 all the way down to verse number 9. We'll unpack the text if we can. And the Bible says in verse 3, being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. There were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence, and, and have been given to the poor. Notice this, Brother Danny, and they. Everybody say they. they. And they murmured against her. Boy, that's, I believe, self-explanatory. Verse 6, Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble you her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, ye may do them good. But me you have not always. She had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Father, I thank you tonight for the reading of the Word of God. Thank you for the good singing that we have heard, the congregation, the special music. God, we thank you for every man, every lady, every boy and girl that is assembled into the house of God. We're thankful, God, that the divine guest, the Holy Ghost, is in this room. I pray tonight that you would anoint me to preach, anoint them to hear. And when the altar call is given in a few short moments from now, I pray that the back door would look and seem as though it's a million miles away and the altar is so near. And that we would respond, God, to the preaching of the Word of God. Challenge us, convict us, Change us. Do, oh God, what only you can do. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. you may be seated tonight. I, I want to preach tonight, if I could, about this little woman that break the alabaster box and poured it on the head of the Son of God. If you like to write down what the preacher preaches, here is what I'm going to preach tonight. I want to preach on don't quit serving the Lord. Let me say it again. Don't quit serving the Lord. Now, I don't know what's been going on in your world. I don't know what's been happening in your personal life and Maybe what's even happened in your family or your church family. But I am convinced tonight, maybe you've walked in this evening and maybe the effects of COVID-19 and the pandemic that has been around the world 
has hit you, somebody close to you, somebody that you love has died and went on to be with the Lord. I don't know, maybe tragedy, maybe disappointment, maybe heartache and difficulty. And can I just insert this right here? What I'm seeing across America is many are throwing in the towel and quitting. I've never seen a day quite like today where people are allowing circumstances and what's going on in their life to make them want to quit and make them want to walk away. I, I've never seen it quite like it is, but I have noticed in, in, as I zigzag around America. But I won't give you a verse tonight before I drop anchor and preach to you. I, I want to read Psalms 101 and verse number 6. The Bible said, Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me, he that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Now, I, I want you to get this tonight. I, I could call names, but I, I don't want you to think that I'm saying this about you, but, but I do believe if you're born again, you need to be faithful. I believe that if your name has been written in the book of life, you need to be in the house of the living God. And Brother Jerry and Brother Jeremy and, and Brother Sam, let me just word it like this. Folks, Brother Danny, that one time we used to be able to count on that was consistent, that was faithful, that was sold out. You can't, I mean, they're missing among the faithful. And they're not even coming to church in this hour. I have noticed that people inside the friendly confines of the house of God are divided. Some of, uh, some of them are distracted and some of them are discouraged. And again, many, many, Brother Chris, are quitting. Many are walking away. But I want you to understand tonight, it's not time to quit. It's time to keep on keeping on. And, and I know you know that, and I know, Brother James, I'll get some amens, but I'm not fishing for amens yet. Let, let, let's dig in. We come to, to this wonderful text in the book of Mark. Let me set up what's occurred and what's happened before Mark chapter 14, verse 3 through 9. Jesus shows up at a funeral. Now, I'm about to get blessed by my own preaching, and they say you're not supposed to do that. But it blesses me. Do you realize Jesus did not show up to the funeral to attend the funeral? He came to end the funeral. <laughs> he didn't show up to show his respects. He showed up to do a miracle. And every time, Grace, every time Jesus showed up at the scene, there was a miracle. You say, Derek, can you prove it? I think I can. Every time he showed up, he, he, the storm stopped. When Jesus showed up, sickness ceased. When Jesus showed up, darkness is dispelled. When Jesus showed up, diseases were delivered. When Jesus showed up, demons were defeated. I'm not done. Hold up, Derek. What else happened when Jesus showed up? When Jesus showed up, lame legs walked when are jumped up when Jesus showed up deaf ears listened up and blind eyes looked up when Jesus I love this right here when Jesus showed up dead folks got up boy I've been in enough Baptist churches to know we need him to show up don't y'all sit up here and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about we need His presence and His power to stir the people in the house of God. And so God said, Derek, look at St. John. Parallel text to Mark 14. St. John chapter 12. Brother Danny, I'll describe the scene for all of us sitting in here tonight. 
Lazarus is sitting at the table because Lazarus has been resurrected. Jesus said, Lazarus come forth. And the dead man got up. Now, boy, I feel like I need to insert that. You, you say, well, he had been dead for four days. You do realize it wouldn't have mattered, Brother William, if he'd have been dead 40 years. Or 400 years when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. The dead man got up. And so that's where we are. But in St. John, they're having a party. Lazarus is setting up the table. Martha is working in the kitchen. And Mary's got her eyes on Jesus and she can't take her eyes off of Jesus because Jesus raised her brother from the grave. And she's just worshiping the king of all kings. Now, I'm finally getting where I want to go. Derek, are you to your point yet? No, I'm five minutes in and we're still introing. Boy, if you'd grin, you'd make me feel better, I'm telling you. But here's where we are, and I want you to see it. The Bible said Mary took a pound of ointment, very costly, spikenard, and and boy, there's some interesting words here. She breaks it, she dumps it, she pours it on the head of the Son of God. Notice with me, I made you see it tonight, Mark 14 and verse 9. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this, Brother West, shall be spoken of for a memorial of her in remembrance of her. Now here, here's what blesses this evangelist tonight. Brother Joe, we are remembering a peasant girl. We are remembering a... Uh, uh, no education, she's not a queen, she didn't write a book in the Bible, she's not married to a fancy preacher, she is a nobody with no recognition, but Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached, you got to preach about Mary, because I like what she did. She broke the box and she poured it on the head of the Son of God. Now I'm going to give you the clincher. I'm going to get you the one to get a hold of you. Derek Stennett, why did Jesus say that? Why did he say wherever the gospel is preached, remember her? Here's why. And I think you'll amen it. Not because she was a peasant girl. Not because she was uneducated. Here is why he said remember Because God never forgets faithfulness. I don't know how y'all can stay so calm. God never forgets service to Him. And can I tell you tonight, yeah, we've hit a few bumps in the road, and yeah, we've had some difficulties, and yeah, we've had some disappointments, and yeah, some people uh, have even broke our hearts. But can I tell you tonight, Brother Danny, we need some people that will not quit serving the Lord. Don't quit serving the Lord. If you take notes, here's what I want you to write down. Now the good thing tonight, I don't have three or four subs on each point. Brother David, that ought to make you amen right there. But I'm going to give you some meat and taters, number one. And, And here's what I want you to write down. Don't quit giving to Jesus. Let me say it again because I don't think you heard it. Some of you just listened and then you looked around. Let me say it again so it can marinate on your heart. Don't quit giving to Jesus. Let's look at it again. I'm in verse 3. We'll we'll get it all out. Don't worry this evening. We'll get it all out. The Bible says in verse 3, being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box, note this, of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it. That little word poured in the Greek, it means emptied it, 
in its entirety. She, in, she put all, when she broke the box, Brother Randy, she, she didn't do like most Baptists and say, that's enough. Somebody amen that. Sister Tammy, you know, sister, you know how it is, ladies. Crystal, you know. I mean, I see people. Don't, don't overdo it. No, when she break the box, she poured all of it on the head of Jesus. And she was teaching us something very valuable. And I want to give it to you tonight. And I'm going to talk about money. Oh, I cannot believe I'm doing it on the last night. But, but, but I'm not look, everybody look up here. I'm not looking for an offering. Amen. Sam, I'm not looking for you to pad my pocket. Do you, you do realize tithing has nothing to do with the evangelist? This is going over good. I can see it in your heart. It's going over good. And so, so giving, giving is essential. And let me prove that to you. Don't quit giving to Jesus. I am going to talk about money tonight for this reason. God uses money to gauge your spiritual temperature. God uses money. Now, Mary, here's what I want you to... Boy, I kind of story. David, I kind of story. Mary gave her best offering. Now, if you take notes, that's what I want you to write down. She gave her best offering. And and I don't know about you. I remember the old church. They used to put their whole lives in the offering plate and say, I give you all I have. Wouldn't it be good at grace if we would give God our best? She gave her best. The little word spikenard, I want you to write down, it means genuine. She gave a genuine offering. She gave a genuine, most expensive perfume. Brother Jeremy, when I've done the research, here's what I discovered. Emperors and kings would get people to go into the Indies mountain, into the, into the mountains of India and bring back this spikenard, this very costly. We know according to the scripture that that it was 300 pence. In other words, Brother Chris, it was a year's worth of wages. Now, Now, can I just say this tonight? I can hear your mind screaming out, Derek Stinnett, you said she's a peasant girl. I did. You said she's uneducated. I did. You, you mean to tell me how on planet earth did this woman have a year's worth of the most expensive perfume on all the planet? Everybody look up here. I'm going to give you the answer. Oh, you mean you? Yeah, I'm going to give it to you, Brother James. Here it is. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I knew I could see them waiting on Ezra to see, waiting for me to give them something they never heard. But I'm telling you, I, I, I don't have the answer because, sir, ma'am, the Bible, Chris, the Bible doesn't tell us why or how she did it, whether she saved it up, care whether she saved it up her whole life or whatever she did. But she break the box and she poured it on the head of the Son of God and she gave her best offering. Brother Danny, when I think about church going folks, and I'm not being mean and I'm not being unkind, But do you realize we give to what we love? What do you mean? A few years ago, the Hogs made a bowl game. Now, we don't make a whole lot of bowl games. Leave me alone. But we made a bowl game, and and my boy, he wanted to go, and and I, I, I bought the tickets, and, and I bought them, and we went, brother. Danny, we went to the game. But I got to thinking about people. And I'm going to just say this about myself. I wasn't worried about how much it cost. Brother Randy, my boy wanted to go and I wanted to go and have fun. We paid for the tickets. We paid for the hotel room. We ate the food. We had a good time. But I get to thinking about us in the church. 
You do realize we'll give to our passions, our favorite team. We'll give to our, our favorite toys, whether it's on our truck, we, we, we put a new bed liner on the truck, or, or we put something fancy, something to haul something. You know we got to haul something. Somebody amen that. Uh, whatever it is, and you you don't pay, you don't count the cost. You don't count the cost for entertainment. You don't count the cost for industry or how much you're going to invest. You just give it. I'm reminded of my children. We'll go out to eat, brother Randy. This is classic. We'll go out to eat, brother Joe, and we're sitting around the table. You know when you're the daddy, you're banking on you're going to get the leftovers. You're just banking on it. But, but you want to see how your children are. So my, my little girl, my little boy at the time, and I'm sitting there, Sam, and I said, I said, can I have that? No. So I wait a few minutes, Brother Jerry, and I said, can I have that? No. Finally, they get kale. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> and they put it in their mouth. And they chew on it. And then they go, here, Daddy. <laughs> That's a classic illustration of sometimes, Brother James, we give God leftovers. I'm preaching way better than your amen, and Brother Tommy. Amen. Amen. We give God leftovers. And I don't know who I'm preaching to on a Wednesday night, but I want to be like the lady in the text. I want to give my best offering to Him. Brother Danny, I'll say this to you people. Give one illustration and then I'll move. If you give God something that cost you nothing, it would be better to give Him Nothing. Amen. Give him your best. I remember I went to the Philippines in 03, in 05, in 08, and in 17. And they told me, I believe, that Brother Ephraim Camacho has been, has he been here, Brother Danny? Brother Ephraim has been here. So I, I've been to the Philippines, 03, 05, 08, and 17. And, and, and we've given money. I remember, Brother Jeremy, like it was yesterday. Brother Ephraim told me this. He said, Derek, we used to give Bibles to our people. He said, but here's what they would do. He said, they just throw it on the pew. Sam, here's what he was telling me. It didn't cost them nothing. And they just left it on the pew. He said, we flipped the equation, Derek, and we started making them buy their Bible. <laughs> and when they got sweat in the game, Brother Randy, all of a sudden they put it under their arm and they toted it because they put something in it. Can I tell you, worship's the same. When you give God your best worship, you know why I don't worry about people, what they think about me? Because I raise my hands and I'm excited and because I ain't worshiping for you to see. I don't give 10 cents what you think about my worship. Because it ain't to you. And Brother William, I'm not, I mean, I mean this. Sister Buffett, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to give him my best. If you'll give him your best. Not only did she give her best, write this down. She not only gave her best, don't quit giving to Jesus. She not only gave her best, she gave her biggest offering. <laughs> she gave her biggest offering. How do you know that? I, I think I've done proved to you that she took a year's worth of wages. I want to go to verse 4. I'm not going to hang out long because I, 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 I really want to get somewhere tonight. Look at verse 4 in chapter 14 of the book of Mark. There were some that had an indignation within themselves and said, Why? Why was this waste of the ointment made? Waste there, it means trash. It means to trash. Now, if you need to write this down, I'll go slow. And if you don't write it down and you want it, I'll give it to you after church. But here's what the world says. The world says if you give anything to the Lord, 
It's a waste. But the truth is, Brother Danny, if you don't give everything to the Lord, it's a waste. <laughs> I love that. If you give, you say, Derek, would you say it again? Oh, yeah, I will. If you, the world says if you give anything to the Lord, it's a waste. The truth is, if you don't give everything to Him, it's a waste. I knew I'd lose my manners. I had a feeling I was going to lose my manners. It's true. We need to give our biggest and we need to give our best. The Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. You knew I'd go there. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me how wherewith saith the Lord of hosts. It, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out on you a, a, a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. But brother Jeremy, there is a verse not. It said, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me in your tithe. This whole nation. And, and boy, here's where it's going to get touchy. But I'm going to say it anyhow. If you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and you are filled with the Spirit of God, and you walk into the house of God, and you squeeze your money, and you don't give your tithes and offerings to God, you are robbing God. Now, hold up. I, I, I want to make this plain. I don't want you to miss what I'm saying. If you struggle giving to the Lord, you will struggle living for the Lord. <laughs> Man, I got, a, I got way more amens than I thought. If you struggle giving to Jesus, you will struggle living for Jesus. She gave her best. Don't quit giving to the Lord. Number two. If you take notes, I'm on number two. Don't you don't quit growing in Jesus. Let me say it again. Don't you quit growing in Jesus. Look at verse five. And they, they, the Bible said they, they murmured. Against her. That little word murmured means a verbal snort in anger. We know according to John chapter 12 that Judas is leading the charge. But, but I want you to see, Brother Joe, that the Bible says, but they, they in the text, the reason I made you say they earlier in the night is so that you'll realize these disciples are murmuring against her. Brother Jerry, let me word it a little different. You do know we got a new kind of Christian today. He's not a Ford or a Chevy. He's a GMAC. Grumble, mumble, and complain. You know it's the truth. Grumbling and complaining is in their DNA. Yeah. Amen, Brother Derek. They're good at it. And here's what I want you to see. Brother, Brother Danny, they, the disciples, Brother Chris, they have a front row seat to the Son of God. They've heard His messages. They've seen His miracles. They've seen the majestic, the, the, the majesty of the lovely Lord Jesus. But everybody look up here. Would you agree according to this? They have not yet spiritually developed like they should have. They have not yet grown like they should have. Now, don't get mad at me, but would anybody agree if the disciples haven't fully bloomed and hadn't fully grown to where they ought to be? Don't think it's not possible, Brother David, that we haven't grown. So God said, Derek, preach to my people, don't quit giving to the Lord and don't quit growing in the Lord. I'm going to tell you tonight, I am seeing stunted growth in the American church. Brother Joe, we go so far and then we quit. We go so far and then we quit. We don't, I, I said, God, help us, God. God, I want to grow. I want to really grow. God said, I want you to take Mary, take this lady in the text and show them that she was developing and that she was growing. So I want to show you that tonight. They murmured against her. I see 
that they, that they were not spiritually developed. They, they had not re- yet reached their maturity in the Lord. But I see this woman is spiritually mature. I find how she was spiritually mature two ways. And I want you to write them down. Number one, I see her. She was lifting him up. How many would agree when you're spiritually mature, you're not talking about you? (laughs) You, Brother Sam, and I are not bragging about Sam and Derek. We're bragging and lifting up the Lord. Now, I want to give this to you, and I want you to hear it. We wouldn't even know her name is is Mary if we didn't have St. John chapter 12. Because in Mark chapter 14, I want you to notice that her name is not even mentioned. She is mentioned six times. Her is mentioned four times. And she's the one that broke the box. And she's the one that poured the entire content on the head of the Son of God. And, And please don't fall out with me. She didn't put it on Facebook. She didn't put it on her Twitter account. Y'all hear me? She didn't put it on her Instagram. She wasn't looking for recognition. She was looking to lift up the Lord. I'm going to say this tonight. I'm reminded of a preacher I know. He failed to mention a lady and he didn't put her in the bulletin. And she got mad. I mean, let me say the right word. She got ticked off. Oh, don't y'all act like y'all ain't never heard ticked. She was mad. The preacher goes and sees her. Brother Brother Tommy, she hadn't been. She hadn't been in in a whole month because her name wasn't written in the bulletin. The preacher goes and knocks on the door. The husband lets him in. Preacher said, I made a rookie mistake. She said, yes, you made a rookie mistake. If I'd have been there, that woman would not have liked me. Then she said this. She said, some people are more important than others. (laughs) What? No. Ain't nobody in here any more important than anybody else. We're all important to Him. White man, black man, red man, yellow man, every color man on the planet, He was willing to die for all mankind. And so you say, preacher, preacher, what are you getting at? Listen, and she said, she said, some people are more important. Derek, have you ever seen that in the ministry? Yes. Brother Danny, I've been out preaching revivals and, and have a singing group come in to sing. And, and, and here's what they say. The pastor tells them, you got 20 minutes to sing. Because the man of God's got a message. And here's what the singing group say. We got folks driving for hours to hear us sing. You know what I want to tell them? I thought they'd come to see Jesus. When I know you are spiritually mature, you're not talking about you. You're making much of Him. Now Derek, (laughs) are you ever going to get on? Yeah, I am. (laughs) He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I am convinced, Brother Joe, I am convinced, Brother Jerry, that we ought to lift him up. Don't quit growing in the Lord. Now, not only, I told you she had two things. Not only did she lift him up, she was not only lifting him up, she was living for Jesus. Would anybody agree tonight, the greatest thing you can do as a Christian is lift him up and live for him. And everybody get this tonight. I'm not talking about just living for Him in here. Live for Him out there. 
Derek, do you got any Bible? I do. She had done, I'm in verse 8. She had done what she could. <laughs> I hate to show y'all my hands. Everybody look up here. Here's my hands. Derek, why are you showing them to me? David, I want you to see this. This is my hands. I get made fun of a lot. Here's what they say. You got the softest hands. It's real hard to get calluses doing this. Amen. But, so you don't think, James, you don't think I'm lazy. I'll go home and I'll, I'll, in the hot of the summer, 110 degrees, humidity thick, I am the weed eater. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. And I'm built for weed eating. When you're 5'10, you don't have to bend over. Somebody amen that. <laughs> I can get anything you want. I mean, I can just we it's just a whiz, man. I just I can wheel that baby around. Six, seven hours, you think I'm making it up. I have no problem, brother Chris, I have no problem weed eating. I have no problem. When the weed eating's over, I start reffing. I hate to admit this. And you know why, Jeremy, I do it? It's embarrassing to me. Here's why I do that kind of stuff. Because I hate it that they think preachers are lazy. gets on my nerves. I don't know if you know this. You don't preach sermons without studying the Bible. And it costs you something. And, and I don't have time. But, but, but Brother Danny, I remember being at home. So I, I, I went a long way to say, Brother Randy, my hands are built to hold a Bible and to preach the Word. But I do some other odds and ends <laughs> just cause. I remember being at home and uh, my daddy's genius. I, I didn't really know it and he still is a genius, way smarter than I. And I remember like it was yesterday, uh, daddy said, Derek, now, I, <laughs> hey, I'm going to show you my, my limited ability of cars and, and, and motors. That's a belt. Don't y'all look at me. That's an alternator. That's a starter. That's the, yeah, that's something. That's a battery. <laughs> Brother William, that's about, I mean, you know what I've said about all I know about a motor? My daddy, I was a little, I was young. My daddy said, Derek, let's go. I, and I, here's the bad thing about daddy. Daddy can't fix nothing either. <laughs> so daddy says to me, daddy says, let's, let's go outside and pop the hood and I'm thinking, Sam, I'm thinking, why on planet earth are we popping the hood? Just so we can touch a part and say we knew what it was? Is this, is this look at it and say, we, I mean, if you can get over 10, we're going to brag. We're, I don't have to know every part in the motor. And I thought, David, I, Brother David, I thought, what do we do? Daddy said, let's go. And what I did not know at the time, Dad knew that our next door neighbor, Jack Bailey could fix anything. And Dad knew, Brother Randy, if we pop the hood, the neighbor is going to come over and fix our car. Oh, I didn't know that, but my daddy was a genius. We pop the hood. We touch a few things, and lo and behold, I look out of the corner of my eye. Here comes Jack Bailey across the street. <laughs> he was from Louisiana, and he'd say, hey, cuz. Favorite word, hey, cuz. And I loved him. I mean, I absolutely loved him. And, and Jack come over, and, and here, this is a true story. Jack said, Derek, it's getting dark. Hold this light. He said, hold it right here. And I'd fly, I'd hold that light. He said, Bill, he said, get in there. He touched a few things, Jeremy. He done a few. He said, Bill, get in there and crank it. He didn't crank. He, Jack said, Derek, shine the light over And I shined it over here and I held it. And he does a few more things. Wesley does a few more tweaks. He said, Bill, get back in there and crank it. It cranks and it runs. Here's what I love about the story. Jack looked at me as a little boy. And here's what he said, William. I couldn't have done it without you holding the light. 
I don't know if you know how I'm built. I knew I was a good mechanic. <laughs> I knew I could do it. Hold up. You know why I brought you here? All of us can't preach a sermon. All of us can't teach a class. But every one of us can hold the light. I'm about, whoa! Why are you a wooing now? Because baby, if we could just get you to do what you can do, we could turn this city upside down. Danny, we don't all have to preach like you preach or preach like I preach. If we can just hold the light, preacher. She did what she could. I pray tonight that we wouldn't stop giving to Jesus. We wouldn't stop growing in Jesus and... I'm I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm on my final point. The great news about the final point, it's the shortest. <laughs> Don't quit giving. Don't quit growing. And lastly, don't quit going for Jesus. I'm in verse 8, Mark 14, verse 8. She had done what she could. She has come a full hand to anoint my body, a forehand to anoint my body to the burying. Do you realize, Brother Danny, do you realize, Grace, that this woman knows her spiritual maturity? She knows that he's going to die. And she anoints his body for the burying. Amen. Brother Chris, she didn't quit giving, she didn't quit growing, she didn't quit going. She kept going. And would anybody agree, we need to keep going. Don't let a pandemic, don't let a crazy world, don't let the craziness that you see everywhere around you to make you throw in the towel. We need you to serve God with everything you have. And here's why. Derek, what did she do? I read a great definition of faithfulness the other day and I thought I'd end with it tonight. Faithfulness is this. Taking every opportunity and every ability for the glory of God. Faithfulness, Brother Randy, is taking every opportunity, using every ability for the glory of God. Here's what I learned about this woman. It is one week, Brother Joe, it is one week from Calvary. One week from where Jesus is going to bleed and die on a rugged tree. And she comes. In the Bible days, the humidity, the Bible days, it was so hot. They knew that the body would decay. They, Brother Danny, they did not embalm the body like we do today in America and maybe other, uh, other countries, but, but they would perfume the body to help eliminate the smell. The, and, and so she's anointing the body. She has come a full hand to anoint the body. And here's what I wrote down. And I love it. She did what she could while she could and while she had a chance to do it. What are you saying, Derek? Here's what I'm saying. Don't wait till tomorrow or next week. We need you to activate your service now. Don't quit giving. Don't quit growing. Don't quit going for Jesus. Would you do me a favor and stand all over the room? Would the Brother Jeremy, would you come and help me tonight? Every head bowed. Father, I know that you know every heart. You know every home. You know every man. You know every lady that is in this room tonight. 
And it is my heart's prayer for this great church here in, on the outskirts of Louisa, Virginia. And God, I have been privileged to come and preach several times. And God, I've always thought and always seen great potential in this body of believers. But oh God, I pray that we wouldn't get to the end and think, boy, I wish I'd have done this. I wish I'd have done more. I pray, God, that we would never quit giving to the Lord and that we would never quit growing for the Lord, and that we would never quit get going for the Lord, moving the hearts and homes of these men, women, boys, and girls, and we'll bless you in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Derek, I'm not real gifted. Derek, I'm not the most talented. I am not the most gifted. But oh preacher, I want to be the one that holds the light. If that be you, mom, dad, papo, mamo, young man, young, I just want to hold the light. How many hands would go real high? Yeah. All, literally, all over, all, all four is it, yeah, four sections of seats. Derek, I want to hold the light. Derek, I want to do what I can do while I can do it and when I can do it. I want to give my best. I want to give my biggest. I want to give a genuine offering to Him. How many hands would go high? That's me. Yep, 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 yep. All over. Hey, I'm going to turn the mic off. But if you want to be a part of this altar call and you want to go higher and you want to go further in 2021 and you want to be a light holder in a world that's grown cold, a world that is dark, that's the invitation. Would you come?